and in your clinic it's for free. Free. Yeah. The first 1500 is free. So I am glad uh, to have here with me the director of the Longevity Center of the Medical Center Shiba in Tel Aviv, Zippy Strauss. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You are the first center in a public clinic of that, of that type. That's great. Where did you get all your specialists from? It is not easy at the beginning um, to have the physician, the nurses, uh, all the auxiliary, um, like um, physiotherapists, nutritionists. So um, I just, it's, I started with the, the head of uh, internal medicine, who is actually was the dean of uh, medical faculty. So he's a very well known and prestigious person. And he was actually very well, uh, uh, he was keen about longevity. So for me, it was luck uh, that he was uh, engaged. And then when other physicians saw that, uh, you know, I have uh, Professor Grossman, who was the dean of uh, medical uh, faculty, uh, others were started to in be interested. And actually, if you drill down uh, for each uh, subspecialty, so for example, in endocrinology, they do uh, care about longevity in their own specialty. So in endocrinology, it's diabetic patient, in psychogariatic, it's geriatric patient, gynecology, menopause, of course, it's part of longevity. So I kind of like try to gather everybody and explain that you know, each one is looking from his own uh, perspective, but we can do something bigger. So we look at a patient from 360 um, uh, degree and can see from each different angles and then to get the whole picture and try to do better. And you're working close together with Alexandre Hospital in Singapore and also Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Uh, will it be more? Will it be more clinics in future? Because you are really, uh, I guess, they, they will watch you. Yes, yes. I mean, hopefully this is the aim. If you ask me, my dream is uh, not only to stay the first, but also to be uh, leading and uh, teaching other hospitals how to do that in a public facility. Uh, because at the end, we want longevity for all. I really dream, my dream is that every uh, general practitioner in his clinic will do a longevity for each patient. So we will have protocols, we will have guidelines, how to look at a patient from a longevity perspective. I saw your webinar at the NUS and there I thought, uh, so con concerning supplements, biomarker use, uh, epigenetic clocks, etc. Et you are very cautious. You, 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 would, uh, you use only uh, tools which are really evaluated. Yes. And uh, what will be the next new tool you will use and you, be, you are sure to can? So there are several things that I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure in vitamin D, I'm sure in vitamin B12, I'm sure of uh, sleep hygiene, sure. I'm sure of muscle mass. So, by the way, even these little things are important and not being addressed at all. I'm sure about hormones and estrogen. So only by treating these things, there, there are other, uh, only by treating that uh, things I can, I, we can improve. But of course, since we are uh, in a public health, and as I told you before, physicians are very skeptical and they don't want mumbo jumbo. I mean, it, in a private clinic, you can do whatever you want. There is no regulation, nothing. But in a public facility, you really have to go by the rules, which is why we, we want, because if we want to really go a step further in longevity, you really need to have it credible, because otherwise nobody will, will, will do it. Uh, not physicians that are, you know, uh, uh, think uh, and they want to be validated. So we will start, of course, with the known, which are a lot, by the way. And we already started some clinical trials. So we have healthy population. We can do randomized control trial. We will get healthy healthy key approval. So we can do studies that we can understand uh, the cause and effect, try to understand what really helps, what if there are side effects or not, everything is registered. So if we find something that really helps, everybody will believe it because it is credible. 
It's not a story from a, um, some clinic that uh, a person feels great. Okay. <laughs> but it's, you need to validate the data. And what kind of interventions are you offering? Um, cold, ice, uh, box. I, I, <laughs> so there are a lot of things. So is there already something which you can really recommend? Of course. So we, we, we have, after doing the, the full day of assessment, we are focusing on intervention in four areas. Um, cognition and memory. Um, there are intervention. We have a number of psychologists and you can do some exercise. We have a, a app that you can, uh, a lot of intervention. Like you can uh, have a, a new uh, language skill, uh, all kinds of things that you can uh, improve your hearing if there is a problem because it is known that improved uh, hearing might uh, decrease the deterioration of cognition. So it's extremely important. So cognition is one, sleep, Mentioned before uh, also in the conference, sleep is extremely important. Already now in, in the guidelines of cardiovascular disease, they put in sleep uh, to make sure that people are getting good sleep. So sleep tracking, and we have a sleep uh, uh, clinic that patient will go through. We have a sleep detection that they can go and have a, a more in-depth to understand what is their sleep problem and questionnaire and everything. The third is uh, muscle mass and bone mass, and we also was discussed in the conference how important it is, and there are a lot of, uh, so it goes together with nutrition and protein uh, in intake and all of that. And menopause, very well, like not enough addressed at all, menopause and endotype, testosterone level, estrogen level, it goes together with cognition, with sleep deprivation, with a lot of stuff. So these four, we have a lot of intervention. And of course, we check vitamins level. So if there is some uh, supplements that must be uh, addressed, we will give that. So the first reflex from press in Germany is often. Uh, it's only something for the rich because this is very expensive. And in your clinic, it's for free. Free, yeah. The first 1500 is free. We don't take money. First of all, when you do a, um, because we randomize, we do study that um, 1,200 will get intervention, 300 will not get intervention. You cannot take a money when you do a study. So us as Shiba Medical Center, we, we are the biggest in the hospital, top 10 best in the world ranked hospital. We decided to take it as a mission for us to do a healthy longevity in a public hospital free of charge, for the first year, 2023, 2024, have the 1500, see that we have our intervention really improve the measurable outcomes that we are checking uh, the improving biological age. And then uh, we can hopefully, you know, it's a proof of concept. And this is for us is very important. How long is the waiting list? <laughs> we started already, there are uh, several registra uh, people, uh, we have few, uh, uh, almost a hundred that already in the waiting list. Um, hopefully we can have everybody that wants. <laughs> What's your vision? Where will be uh, the longevity center in the medical center of Shiba in three or five years? Uh, my vision, we will have around 3,000, up to 5,000 in a year. Uh, yeah, uh, the vision is that it will be a big center uh, starting even from uh, screening for uh, health issues that we don't address because in longevity we don't do ca cancer, uh, mammography, colonoscopy, all that. So it can start with just making sure that you are healthy and don't have any other issues and then continue to longevity. So it will be a very big and thorough assessment. AI. You are working on database, and you're using dashboards. Of course, you have to. It's not possible. I mean, longevity, I think, was the, the, the step up was um, having the deep machine learning. All the biological aging clock are um, um, based on, on, on algorithm. So the idea is to get a lot of data and also, you know, as a physician, I'm 25 years already a neonatologist. So when I see a patient, I have my, my 25 years of experience 
then I can you know, treat better than someone who just have a, a two years of experience or 10 years of experience. But when you see, nowadays, when you see a patient, 55 years old, you have certain experience, but the computer has million of million of data that he can compare the million people that the computer saw. I, we, I, I saw a few thousands, maybe, thousands of premature babies. So we, for us, I think, and this is something that physicians are still not all of them, and this is part of, of, of a problem, but I think the young generation of physicians understand that this is something that gives us aid. It helps us to do a better um, medicine because we can use the deep machine learning, the tons of data that you as a, as a person cannot understand so many wearables and so many different data and heart rate and heart rate variability and, 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 and the sleep. And you cannot calculate everything and to make something out of it. And the, the, the computer can. So it can give us some idea and help in order to treat better uh, our patients. So I think it's, it's something that really, really gave us an extra as physician that we can, uh, this will, this is a breakthrough for sure. And uh, in longevity, we, we use it a lot. How long do you have to, to treat a person to get a result? Um, now, you are uh, open since when? We started in May retrospectively to gather the longevity court and we are opening in a few weeks. I asked all experts here, what are you doing for your longevity, yeah. healthy longevity? What are you doing? Uh, first of all, I'm optimistic, very important, very good social life, trying to keep it. Uh, Mediterranean diet. I do fasting, um, intermittent fasting, not every day because it, I get very thin and too thin. So I don't like it, but three, four times a day I do intermittent fasting, like um, 8, 16. Uh, exercise a lot, like running and resistance, which I added when I started to, three years ago when I started to read about longevity and, and know the area, I understood the importance of muscle mass because I was a runner, so muscle mass. Uh, so I added a lot of resistance. Uh, I do sauna, I do cold bath. Uh, I take vitamin supplements, but only the DB12, the things that, and I have my levels, so I try to keep them on the, the best level uh, on performance. And actually, that's it. So um, that's, that's, that's the things I'm trying to, to keep up. But I think exercise, good nutrition, and always, as I say, you have all the, always to, to do something challenging, so it will keep you young. <laughs> I'm trying, but Sounds yes. Good luck for yes. the opening. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.